thank you again for sort of coming on to talk about some of the some of the news of the week. I think it's been an interesting week in MCP land and worth having just a, a quick discussion. Um, the two topics I was hoping to chat about were the registry, which I know you were kind of very much paying attention to and quite interested in, but mm -hmm. also what happened yesterday in the announcements from OpenAI around MCP being part of ChatGPT. So why don't we start with the registry bit and then we'll kind of close with uh, with what's going on over at OpenAI. Yeah, totally. Uh, so, you know, just, just to start, you know, uh, I'm sort of just an outside observer on the registry. Um, just kind of throw that out there as a, as a caveat. Um, so this is just my take from what I've observed, what I've seen, um, that sort of thing. Um, but just to start with some key information, basically the registry is a project um, under the, you know, MCP organization. Um, and we'll get into kind of what it does, but here's, you know, some of the interesting stats about it. It was launched in preview a couple days ago. That's the big piece of news there. Since it was launched, uh, 161 servers have been pushed um, to the registry. Uh, the way, like, that's developers basically using the little published CLI to push their server up there. Um, and these are the folks uh, that are the key maintainers, uh, Adam, Tadas, and Toby. Um, and you can see um, right at that kind of launch point, you can see a big jump in sort of the GitHub stars as it got launched there. Um, but this doesn't tell you too much about what it does. Uh, this is more what it is, what it does. This is just taken directly from their documentation. And I think it uh, does a really good job kind of describing what it is. So you have sort of the registry spec itself and then the official MCP registry. Um, you know, the spec is so that anyone kind of can take this and implement a downstream registry. Um, the official registry is if you go and, you know, use the publish tool, it'll publish to registry.modelcontextprotocol.io. Uh, what is interesting uh, about all this is sort of the, this official registry is kind of meant to be uh, an upstream registry that downstream ones will pull from. And in fact, I'm going to jump ahead here. This is sort of the vision for the ecosystem. Um, so sort of the official MCV registry sits up here. Folks are publishing to it. Uh, but then these downstream registries are actually, you know, where clients are interacting with um, uh, registries. So you have this layer of sort of, um, I guess, more opinionated registries here and then clients consuming those. Now, my take is we have this piece right now. We don't have this piece yet where clients are pulling from registries, um, nor do we really have sort of these ones yet. So sort of the chicken and the egg scenario we're in right now is, okay, the official registry is there. It was just launched in preview. Now let's get clients and um, downstream registries implementing this so that like they can all sort of mesh together. So I think like adoption of this will depend on, you know, what clients come along, um, what companies sort of come along with it. But you do see interest from, you know, the, the key maintainers, one's from Anthropic, I believe the other one was from GitHub. So you do see interest there. Um, I don't know, I'll pause there, Chan, and see if you have any thoughts on it. Yeah, no, I think, it, I mean, this is very similar to what uh, taught us and yeah. presented in San Francisco at the last uh, MCP Dev Summit. They kind of explained this architecture at the time. So it's exciting to see it being realized. It, mm -hmm. Is it fair for me to imagine this as the the official MCP registry is an uncurated, massive list of MCPs that anyone can publish to that are not being inspected or judged or evaluated? It really is simply a clearinghouse that allows, you know, kind of people to follow a, a specific format, um, you know, you know, effectively provide the right metadata, announce what the MCP is and publish it there. And then the expectation, if you kind of jump back to your slide a second sure. ago, the expectation is that these, you know, sort of sub registries, we'll call them, which are, you know, run by an organization, whether internally or a third party organization that's running them for, you know, its users. These are the curated lists, like they are evaluating, judging, making determination on which MCPs they think are both valuable and trustworthy and should then be put in front, tested maybe on their clients, you know, have a, um, you know, kind of of the 12 MCPs that can talk to XYZ API, this is the one we've 
we think you should be using. It's it's the most re reliable. Is that kind of roughly how you would see the the global registry? That's yeah, that's how I understand it. You know, with a few caveats of you know there is you know what they will what what they say in the documentation they will do is um, if someone complains that a server is malicious, you know, like you can get them taken out of there for malicious code. Um, if it's completely non-functional, non that's kind of another criteria that makes it worthy of actually getting pulled down. But buggy, quality, those sorts of things um, are explicitly outside the scope of the curation done at the, you know, at the official uh, register. And the curation does not include review. Like they are, like the publishing action is not reviewed. The whole idea is the publishing action is pretty much wide open. Anybody publishes. So this, you know, this is not the place to judge that of the 20 GitHub registries, this is the official GitHub registry. Now, right. there might be, a, I do anticipate other people sort of doing that level of validation to say, well, this is the, you know, this is the GitHub registry we're going to put in our uh, catalog because it is the official GitHub registry, but that's not the function of this official MCP registry. Yeah, mostly I think one caveat there is, uh, you, th so there is, you know, automation when you, when you push and, and sort of some automated checks that happen. One thing that's worthwhile is noting that like any registry you push there, again, this is my understanding as an outsider, is namespaced. And if your namespace on your registry is github.com slash MCP, like that's what you've pushed, mm -hmm. they require that you do DNS validation that you own github.com. So you can at least, if you see that there, you can trust, oh, this is, you know, that's, that's kind of a key indicator. This is actually coming from the owner of that domain. Okay. Now, okay. So there is yeah. a level of validation in there that is at least if you see that in the namespace that the MCP is 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 owning, they are validating the DNS. Exactly. Yeah. And then you don't have to do DNS. You can also just do, you know, because not everyone has that. So you can also just reference using GitHub was weird because get you can also just reference a GitHub repo. Mm -hmm. Um and so with that one, you do have to do sort of a different type of validation to prove you own that repo as well. Okay. So someone can't squat on your, you know, your repo and push it there. Okay. Um, and I think they'll add more validation. Like, you know, I opened a bug, hey, this repo URL doesn't resolve and someone jumped on it right away. Like, you know, we need to get that fixed. So they're definitely paying attention. And I think sort of that automated validation is what you'll see at sort of the upstream is whatever they can do automated, but be very permissive. They don't want to sort of be a walled garden or prevent things. They want, you know, they want a lot of MCP servers here and allow the curation to ha happen downstream. Awesome. And so from your perspective, as somebody who's, you know, on the OBOT side, you're dealing with running a catalog. Are you excited for this? Is this going to make your life easier? I think, you know, so it's interesting. I also saw on uh, Reddit, the co-founder, I think it goes by PunkPie of Glamma.ai sort of had thoughts somewhat similar to mine, which is like, you know, I think in the, at least in the short term, this is a source of MCPs. I don't think like yet it's going to be the source. And I don't, you know, I think again, there's that chicken and egg scenario, like, it won't become the source until everyone adopts it, you know, and not everyone's going to adopt it until you sort of the ecosystem sort of gets a snowball effect. So right now for us, I think it's a, a source we can look at for, you know, servers to pull in. I don't think it's the only one. What I will say is um, jumping back to this slide, I think one of the big benefits, I think the most useful thing coming out of this is sort of the specification and the server.json because it really is a standardized way to at least describe an MCP server. You know, so whatever happens with this official upstream registry, we'll see. I think there's a lot of value in sort of the server.json. Like we invented something that looks 80 to 90% like what this server.json looks like for our own purposes, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I can definitely see this format, like a standardization here, having value in and of itself, you know, um, at all levels for people to describe their servers, for people consuming servers, that sort of thing. And I think it will evolve over time. That's why it's preview now. We'll get it out there and get feedback from the community and see what happens to it. Awesome. Well, thanks for kind of diving into that. And, you know, congratulations to Tadis and Toby and the people who've been working really hard in the community on this. Adam um, over at Anthropic, like they have made uh, a lot of effort in a relatively short amount of time to get this out the door and yep. to get some alignment between a lot of people who, you know, obviously run their own gateways and and do a lot around it so um yeah definitely take a look at uh, at this